I'd like to welcome you to the 2012 Dr. John W. Harris Teacher of the Year Award reception. You know, as I look across the room this evening, it's just such a feeling of family. We are a family committed to who we serve and how we do it, and we continue to always see the future and work toward the best. Tonight we're here to celebrate 17 of the best in our community. It's been said, a truly special teacher is very wise and sees tomorrow in every student's eyes. And that's just what we do each and every day. And so welcome to those of you who are nominees and those of you have, who have received the award in the past and family and friends and staff members who are here tonight. We're going to start with dessert and allow you to finish your dialogue and fellowship discussions around your table and then I'll interrupt you a short time later. So um, there are dessert tables on both sides of the room so please help yourself and we'll continue with the program in a short while. Before our school board members um, come forward to take us through tonight's event, I'd like to acknowledge some very important people behind the scenes who helped make this evening possible. And a special thank you to SFEA, who provide the boutonnieres and the, cors the corsages for our nominees, and they were here this evening to greet our guests. A special thank you to Ben Schumacher, who's over there standing behind the camera, and Jeff Little for filming tonight's reception and contributing their talents to a very special video presentation you'll see just a few minutes from now. In addition, um, along with portions of this evening's event, uh, Ben will be putting together a finalist interview um, and a video that will play on KLEARN and AIR in the next month. And last but not least are five judges who spent hours reading and rereading nominations and verifying how very difficult it is to judge the caliber of nominees that we have each year. Kate Foley, who's with the Small Business and Leadership Development for the Sioux Falls Chamber of Commerce. Brian Jans from the Jans Corporation and the Sioux Falls uh, Chamber Board member. Sergeant Marla Schrank, she's our, one of our school resource officers supervisors. Ginger Pele, our Sioux Falls PTA president. And Julie Westra, our school board member. And also tonight, um, I feel like we have an additional honored guest. We're blessed with the presence of our sheriff, uh, Mike Milstead. So we're glad that he's here. Julie Westra was joined, is also joined. If Julie, do you want to stand up and be recognized? Julie Westra, a board member who served on the committee this year. Um, she's joined at our school board table up here with board president Kent Elberty. Vice President Doug Morrison, Board Member Kate Parker, and Board Member Darren Davey was unable to be here this evening, but he certainly sends his congratulations. So to start off the evening, I would welcome to join me up here, Kent Elberty, our School Board President. I promise to stick to the script, and that'll be the hardest work that I have to do tonight. Since the Teacher of the Year program began in 1989, over 300 teachers have been recognized as nominees and finalists, and 23 of them have previously been named Teacher of the Year. These 23 outstanding teachers represent various backgrounds and areas of specialty, and each possesses effective teaching skills and a passion for their profession. Tonight's program includes the names and schools of all of our previous winners. We have several of our previous winners with us tonight, and I would invite these as very distinguished alumni to stand and be honored as we recognize your legacy. So if any previous winners would please stand and we'd like to recognize you.
Our school board vice president, Doug Morrison, will now introduce this year's 17 nominees. Thank you, Kent. Um, nominations and letters of support were submitted by colleagues, parents, principals, and students for the teachers we are honoring tonight. This support shows us clearly that they are dedicated to educating and preparing each of their students to succeed in our changing world. Nominees, as I read your name, please come and receive a certificate recognizing your achievement. Julie Asen, Special Education Resource at Washington High School. Cindy Audit, Special Education at Horace Mann Elementary. <laughs> Lynn Gillette, Language Arts at Patrick Henry Middle School. Donna Howes, first grade at Horace Mann Elementary. <laughs> Terry Jensen, speech therapist at Patrick Henry Middle School. Steve Kennedy, Physical Education at Annie Sullivan Elementary. <laughs> Kathy Lone, Kindergarten at Annie Sullivan Elementary. Renee New, Early Childhood Special Education at Laura B. Anderson Elementary. Thank you. Nicole Pluster, Structured Teach Program at Horace Mann Bridges. Sherry Schneider, Kindergarten and First Grade Math at Garfield Elementary. <clears throat> Michelle Sorensen Johnson, Accounting and Academy of Finance at Washington High School. And Sheila Wood, English 2 and AP Literature Composition at Washington High. All right, if we can have one more round of applause for all of these teachers. This time, I'm going to turn it over to board member Kate Parker, who's going to introduce you to our five finalists. Each of our five finalists has a unique perspective on their mission and what it means to them to be a teacher. Let's take a few minutes to listen and watch as we learn some of the things that have inspired them to teach and impact others. A great teacher has passion for what they do and they can inspire students to learn and to grow and I think that it takes a special person to use their talents to foster talents in others. She wants uh, work to be done and get good grades so we can graduate and have fun 
during our lives. Well, what I think makes a good teacher is a teacher that's motivative, one that helps their students, gives them advice, doesn't give them answers. And he'll give us pats in the back and tell us if we're doing great. Or if he doesn't think we're doing a good job or something, he'll tell us that he wants the best for us and he wants us to work hard. And she's always willing to work and help me and make sure I know what I'm doing before the test and I'm always caught up in the class, which is really nice. She, she gives us lots of good advices like learn from your mistakes and she helps us with um, all the things we need help with. They just know how to get you to like learning. They know how to get you to, excited about coming to school, excited about maybe even taking tests, excited about getting you prepared for the rest of your life. And I also thank him because he tells what was us what we can be when we get older. He don't say, if you don't do this work, you're going to be a failure. He keeps on encouraging us and saying, oh, you, if you do this, I believe in you. You can get this done. And when you get famous, I want 10% of your check or something. He's always making me laugh and encouraging me to do better in my life and not run around with hoodlums and stuff and stay in sports. She is a really nice person and I bet she um, she's gonna I bet she's gonna make um, learning fun when there's gonna be other people in third grade. Ask anyone what characteristics great teachers possess and most will choose words such as caring, innovative, and student-centered to describe the best of the best. Great teachers are truly exceptional professionals who, as research shows, are the most important element in the equation that is student success. The Sioux Falls School District and Vernity Motor Cars are proud to present our city's best as finalists for the prestigious Dr. John W. Harris Teacher of the Year Award. The award pays tribute to the teaching profession, recognizes the complexity of challenges that confront schools today, and encourages teamwork to turn those challenges into opportunities for students. The teachers you're about to meet inspire. They collaborate. They have rightfully earned the respect and admiration of their students, parents, and colleagues. They value school and community partnerships, and more specifically, they understand and foster school-to-home communication to ensure student success. A truly special teacher is very wise and sees tomorrow in every student's eyes. While each teacher in our community is valued for the time, energy, and compassion they bring to our classrooms every day, these finalists exemplify exceptional dedication. Well, growing up, I was always envious of my elementary teachers. It didn't matter what my day was like at home or what was going on. Every day I got there and they made me feel special. And every day was a journey, something new. I didn't know what, what, what I was going to learn. And I wanted to um, have that same impact, hopefully, on kids that they did on me. My goal is that every student will know that they are special and grow to believe in themselves and know that someday they will do something great. Um, and just that they can come in every day and know that I care what happened to them at their football game or um, at their solo contest or in orchestra or other events, them as a whole child, just that they know they are special. There's always those small great moments where you see a child break through their personal barrier. Sometimes it's academic and they, that concept they couldn't get comes around. Sometimes it's socially that child who was too shy to reach out and make friends and now they have the confidence to do that. Every day is completely different. Um, I never know completely where the day is going to go. And every day there's going to be at least one child who can't wait to see you in the morning because they have something that went on, good or bad, last night that they've been counting on seeing you for today. I decided to become a teacher when I was in high school. I had a math teacher that I admired and he inspired me and made learning fun. I was a very curious student and I decided I wanted to have a life like that. I enjoy seeing people learning getting their goals and setting new goals, learning new things and advancing in whatever they want to do. When I see understanding happening, when I see smiles coming in the door, 
are when I see a student who is frustrated finally accomplish working the problem or doing the assignment. I also enjoy having students come back who have previously been at Washington and they tell me what an advantage it has been to be here and to learn here. So the personal relationships I think is what I enjoy most and being able to help someone. My basic philosophy of teaching is to help make the world a better place. The students that I have are going to be the future adults of, the world, of our world and I enjoy being able to help a little bit. I'm not in a big position of political influence, so I try to do what I can where I can. And I could not do what I do with them or help them advance in the way they do advance without the benefit of them having many other teachers before me. So one person cannot do the job alone, and I'll thank all the teachers before me who have had an influence on that student's life. Work hard, you don't have to be a top student, you just have to work hard, set your goals, and I hope I helped them to achieve that. Well, the reason I became a teacher was that as a senior at Lincoln High School, I had the opportunity to go over to Patrick Henry and mentor, and I worked in the um, resource room there, and I just fell in love working with kids. Um, many of my family just say it's in our blood. My great-grandmother was a teacher, my grandma was a teacher, my mother was a teacher, my sister was a teacher, so I don't know if we were just born into it, but um, once I went over there and worked in the resource room with Mrs. Ray, I absolutely loved it. And right then, I knew I wanted to be a teacher. I think my students expect me to be a lifelong learner along with them, and through their enthusiasm and their creativity, it pushes me to think outside of the box and think what's best for them. How are they going to best learn? And I believe through many different projects, that's how kids learn. You know, giving the kids the responsibility, letting them take ownership, just makes a big difference. And so they kind of instill that lifelong learning in me, and I hope I instill it in them. And hopefully encourage them to not just be a learner in the classroom, but go out in your community and share with your community, get involved, because there's a lot of things that they certainly can do. They're, they're, they're our future leaders. So as I'm driving to school, um, hopefully, I, you know, usually I'm thinking, okay, here we go, here's another new day, make it the best day you can, and, you know, bring in all the energy you can to get kids excited about learning and let them take the leadership and let them be independent learners. Well, it was almost as if I couldn't become a teacher. It has been a calling for a very, very, very long time. Education has always been an emphasis in our family. And there's a picture that my mom has of me as a preschooler at my grandmother's house. And all the neighborhood kids are there to see me. And believe it or not, I have them sitting in a circle and I'm reading them a book. So I think it's partly genetic, uh, but I love it and it's just something that I, I can't not do. Every day I try to make it so that this is an environment where students can develop their potential. We talk about the word potens. It's a Latin word that means able. So what are the students able to do? And that's not just in Latin class, but it's in every class, and it's in life, and it's in giving back to society. And so I hope to accomplish as a teacher uh, to be able to have every student do what they're able to do. My most fulfilling moments we call light bulb moments in class, and that's when a student may not have previously grasped a concept and you work with them and you might explain it in a different way and you see just how they're concentrating. Their face is all frowned and they're, they're concentrating so hard and then they get it. And they smile and their eyes light up and their countenance just changes so drastically. And you think to yourself, oh my goodness, if they could harness that energy, you'd never hear about an energy crisis. And it's just the best. We try to have a light bulb moment every day in every class. When I think about Education, I think how it plays into so many jobs. You know, when you think about cardiologists or a airplane commercial pilot, every job depends on uh, teachers. So I like that every student probably has 20 to 30 teachers in their lifetime, and we all feed into uh, their education. So when we think about teaching and the importance of it, I went into teaching because I like that responsibility and that challenge of meeting the needs of all those students. I think most teachers probably have similar goals that they want to accomplish. I have three main ones that I try to follow. I want to provide a world-class education for these students. I want to provide them the tools they need to succeed, and I also want to provide them the support that they need. 
When we think about all of the students we have taught, I think every day is fulfilling that we have small gains. And as long as the student is growing, then we're succeeding. I don't think we truly know our impact for many, many years, and we may never know it. You know, we don't know uh, what we do in the classroom, the impact that it has. You know, we're preparing students down the road who maybe be performing open heart surgery or they may be flying those 500 people from New York to LA. I don't know that we truly know our impact and that's what really makes teaching exciting. They always say you could keep on doing, never give up. Fun, creative, and wonderful. She's nice and she's like a mom to me. I would like to say that I hope she still goes to the school and she never retires and she, still, she can still be my friend. Finalists, as I read your name, please come forward to receive your certificate. Each of you will also receive a voucher for $100 to use as you wish in your classroom. Kelly Grostadier, fourth grade at John F. Kennedy Elementary. Donna Leininger, AP Calculus and Algebra at Washington High School. <laughs> Rochelle Pearson, fourth grade at All City Elementary. Lynn Thomason, Latin and Learning Center Instruction at Lincoln High School. And last but not least, Tim Wagner, 6th grade at Holy Spirit School. Congratulations again to all of our nominees and finalists. At this time, board member Julie Westra will come forward to make the announcement we're all anxiously awaiting. Thanks, Kate. Nearly $70,000 has been awarded to outstanding teachers since 1989 due to the commitment of Vern Eide Motorcars owner Bruce Eide. Bruce understands that quality teaching not only lights the way for students to achieve, but inspires all teachers to excel. Our ongoing relationship with Bruce and Vern Eide embodies the spirit of the school business partnership. Unfortunately, Bruce was not able to be with us tonight, but we want to recognize him for his support throughout the years. It has truly been extraordinary. Representing Vern Eide this evening on Bruce's behalf is Justin Lake to share in tonight's announcement. Justin, you want to stand up? This year, I had the privilege of serving on the judging panel for the Teacher of the Year Award, and that truly was a privilege. That was so much fun to do. And I also had the privilege of going around to all the schools with Dr. Holman a couple weeks ago to deliver the certificates to the finalists. And I just want to give you kind of a brief little synopsis. They, none of the teachers knew we were coming that day. And so we popped in, and the first one we went to is, is Kelly's classroom. And she made a comment on the video that if one person that day was excited to see her, I can tell you that all of those kids were excited to, to be there that day because she, when we came in and announced it, I've never seen a bigger group hug in my life. I mean, every student in the classroom came and hugged her and was so proud of her. And so that was just so fun to see. And next we went to Donna's class at Washington High School and they were all taking an algebra test. And she, <laughs> she immediately didn't want any of the attention on her. She turned it to the kids and said, now tell them. Tell them what you're learning. And she was so excited to have them share what they were learning. So that was also fun to see. And Rochelle, this is the funniest story. We went there, and she was not in her classroom because she had a student teacher. And so we had the principal go down to the room to get her. She was doing something in another room preparing. And she comes down the hall and she says, what's wrong? 
those kids are so good. I, well, I can't believe, what's, what's wrong? None of them would do anything wrong. And so then we announced, and then we had a few tears, and she was, that was exciting, and lots of hugs were given in that classroom as well, so that was fun. Um, in Lynn's room, she was, this is, that was funny too. She, we came in and she immediately turned her back and she said, oh, I'm having a bad hair day. <laughs> and so that was really funny. <laughs> and Tim, word has it that Tim was so surprised that he couldn't remember what he was doing at the time. So <laughs> that, was, that was all very exciting. Um, before meeting as a group to select this year's recipient, each of the five judges had an opportunity to review and re-review the nominations individually. Then we came together and our final task was to combine our individual thoughts and perspectives to a, into a group consensus and ultimately arrive at the decision which I am about to announce. As we studied the nomination and support letters for our 2012 Teacher of the Year, several words and con concepts stood out. For example, knowledge, dedication, accessibility, outstanding, awesome, patient, role model, service, excellence, mentor, leader, motivating, positive, respected, professional, understanding, creative, upbeat, and helping. And let me tell you, those are just a few of the words. I wish I could stand up here and read um, all the packets, and they, some of them were this thick from colleagues and students and um, supervisors and just amazing. We're so lucky to have all of you. These are just some of the other words, like I said, that were, that were chosen, and like I said, I wish I could read all of them. Um, but they were, this teacher, all of those words are just a few that have been impacted by this teacher every day in and day out for over 20 years. At this time, I'd like to welcome Justin from Vernity to come up for the presentation. And on behalf of Vernity and the Sioux Falls School District, I am so proud to present this plaque and a check for the 2012 John W. Harris Teacher of the Year Award to Donna Leininger. I don't know what to say. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you to the committee. Um, thank you to Jamie Nold, who has been very persistent about this through the years. And Dan Conrad and Cheryl O'Brien. Thank you to Becky Kelly, who has written the letter recommendation, and one of my students, Matt Bell. Thank you most of all to my husband, Dan, who has been very patient all the evenings that we have spent studying, grading papers when we could have been doing something else. Without his support, I would not be here. So I appreciate that very much. I would like all the nominees and the finalists to stand, please. Would you please stand? All the nominees and the finalists. People, these are outstanding teachers from Sioux Falls area. They come from elementary, middle school, and high school. These are special people who all of you deserve to be here and to be awarded. These are leaders in their classrooms and in their schools. Sioux Falls is blessed with outstanding people. And these are just representatives of many other teachers who are in the classrooms and didn't get to come or be nominated, but we have excellence all over. So I am proud to be a teacher. I could not think of a career that I would be happier with to affect the lives of young people, to make themselves receive their, make their dreams into reality. And I know 
I'll speak for you all. I think you feel the same way. So congratulations to all of you, and thank you, everyone, again. Congratulations, Donna, and congratulations to each of you. I want to thank each of you for coming this evening, and I especially want to take thank those of you who are teachers for the sacrifices you make day in and day out so that each child in our community can have a brighter future and can see the future ahead of them. Thank you and continue doing what you do each day. Good night. feels amazing to be, have the honor to be named the teacher of Sioux Falls for 2012. I didn't think it would be so, you know, it just brings joy to my heart. And um, last night at the banquet, I just appreciated all the people who were there. And today I've received emails and it just brings affirmation to me. And I really appreciate that. The success of one teacher is dependent not only on the experiences of that particular teacher with the students that he or she has at the present time, but it is dependent on the experience of the student beforehand. The experience that the student gets from parents, the priority of education in the family, the experience that a student gets in all the other teachers previous, because it is a ladder and it is progression, progression especially in the area of math. You have to know the simple facts before you can understand the more complicated ones. Without background and background knowledge, I couldn't put the icing on the cake, but you have to have the cake before it. And that is done by many, many people before me. The students keep me teaching. Uh, I love the students. I love the schedule. I love seeing students learn. I love seeing them accomplish things and coming back and tell me how it has made a difference in their life. So the teaching, I've stayed in teaching simply because I enjoy the students. I also enjoy the people I work with. They are affirmative, they're collaborative, they bring the best out of me. And how can you not enjoy when somebody wants the best for you? Well, any teacher, uh, myself and others, we spend hours at home doing grading, preparation. If you teach an AP course, you spend hours preparing, trying to explain things as best you can, making sure that you make hard things easy in class. And it requires hours and hours. Over the summers, a lot of the public thinks that we do not work well we do not get paid for the summer no but many of us work very hard I learn my subjects of pre-calculus and calculus by doing the curriculum the whole book every summer for two to three summers each when I was preparing for the course I would do it once in the summer teach it the year do it once again we're always studying and improving we're taking classes the technology changes often so many of us come here weekends we come evenings to get our work done simply to make the days uh, schedule flow nicely so that the students are prepared and we're prepared for them. It is not a 7.30 to 3.30 job. We put hours in and uh, we enjoy what we do, otherwise we wouldn't do it. And um, you know the weekend sessions I have for AP, it's a pleasure to have them in my home. It makes me more of a person to them and vice versa. And they enjoy coming and working and they work hard. They work very hard. Uh, their favorite dessert is banana splits. That's usually what I have the last session before the AP test. And I uh, enjoy having them. We also have help sessions here at school because our time schedule, we need to make adjust it to fit into student schedule. So a teacher's work is never done until it's over with for the year. And then after that, we immediately start preparing for the next year. Being a teacher is, I think, for myself personally, what I wanted to be. I wanted to be a person who could help someone, and um, this is the way I found that I have skills that I can do that, to make people's dreams, goals, desires come true with a little bit of my help along the way is very fulfilling for me. I also would like to express very great thanks to Vernati for this program, for their gift, for the idea of teacher affirmation. They have been example of positive reinforcement and um, teachers need that 
all the time. Any profession needs it. But they have certainly made an effort to be outstanding in that regard. And as one person who's had the experience, I appreciate that very much, and I thank Vernity. Oh, there are many favorite moments. One of them was this morning when Mr. Nogue called my students down out of their classroom to the commons, and I walked down the stairs, and um, they had flowers and, and wished me congratulations. That was very touching. Um, in the classroom, any time we learn and laugh together, you know, that is a joy. Any time a student expresses affirmation about what they're doing, that's a joy. With the ninth graders, any time they say, I understand this, that's a joy. So the students are what makes a difference. Whenever a student is having a difficult time understanding something, I try to say, how can I explain it differently so that they can, exp they can experience success? Um, it's the students that give the joy and their achievement.